You are listening to the Worship Tea Podcast, where we spill the tea on all things worship. Let's just face it, worship leading can be hard at times. The Worship Tea Podcast was created to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly concerning all things worship. And I am your host, Raina Brown. I will remind you every episode that this is the kind of tea that you can spill, so don't forget to share. Hey, you guys, this is Raina Brown here at the Worship Tea Podcast. I am so excited to be back with y'all. I know that I've been on a hiatus, but I am just grateful that I am able to come back and we are about to drop some Worship Tea Podcast episodes that are going to be so amazing. And so today, this week, we are going to be talking about leading worship in the rhythm of motherhood. So y'all, I am not a mom and I experienced challenges in leadership and in leading worship in that world so much so that I cannot even imagine adding littles to the mix. I've been watching this woman come to worship every Sunday with a little one on her hip, with another little one behind her, with her little cup and her little feet following behind her at 7.30 on a Sunday morning. And y'all, she's gotten up. I'm sure her clock was set for six o'clock. She's gotten up, she has fed herself, she's fed her littles, or maybe stopped the Starbucks, who knows, right? <laughs> and she has gotten them dressed, they come there, they match, they don't look <laughs> like somebody just threw some clothes on them. And I cannot imagine having to do that every single Sunday. She loads them in the car and she gets them to church and to worship early, not just to lead worship, but to load in and to help get things set up. And I think about myself, y'all, I promise you, If it were me, I would get to church with my baby bag on my side and my kid would probably be left home fully clothed in their jacket, (laughs) sitting on the couch, waiting for mom and dad to come back because we forgot them. I'm telling you, that would be my life. So when it comes to leading worship in the rhythm of motherhood, we're going to dig into what that looks like. And as you know, we get into the good the bad and the ugly of worship here. So we're gonna talk about handling responsibilities in leadership and at home simultaneously, some challenges of trying to be fully present in both spaces, balancing home when both the mom and dad serve together, what that support system looks like, self-care for that mama, how the serve will affect the littles and so much more today. We have a strong, powerful, beautiful guest that I can call friend. She's a wife to a wonderful man. Sure, he's still out on that. No, I promise you, he's a great dude. And a mother to two beautiful and sassy girls. She's a PK, y'all, so she's been in ministry her whole entire life. She has had the pleasure of working with children's ministry, planning and leading events, leading worship and helping out with whatever the needs of the church are. Her husband, gently, I don't know about that, but he pushed her to step out of her comfort zone and to take on the role of leading worship on a praise team. She's amazing, y'all. Rather than her just singing in the church choir, and she's been in love with that ever since. She works in a veterinary hospital and loves animals, and I think we're gonna revisit that because we got some things going on there. She gracefully notes that motherhood and ministry, especially together, are not easy, but they are truly worth it. So y'all, let's welcome Amber Johnson, worship leader and mama. Amber, we are so glad that you are here with us. I'm so excited that um, you gave me a yes, (laughs) right? Uh, It's gotta be so hard to be able to just be like, look, I'm gonna give you the ins and outs of me. I'm gonna be transparent and I'm gonna talk about what this journey looks like. For sure. And so there are so many moms that come to rehearsals with babies strapped on their chest and they're singing in rehearsals and then they got to go run in the back, feed the baby, do Mm -hmm. something. And then they got to get up there for the service. Right. And they got to worship the Lord with everything they have. And then God forbid their number comes across the screen for their (laughs) little one. Right. And then they got to run out. So let's talk a little bit today about all the things, but first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. So, um, I am a mom of two, um, sassy little girls, as we, said um sorry husband they get that from me (laughs) um i have a four-year-old and a one-year-old um i manage a veterinary hospital um and i lead worship at purpose church and i love every bit of all of that so 
Yeah. Yay. That sounds good, but it's a lot. It is. <laughs> that seems like a lot. So now we're talking about you have a job. Mm -hmm. You got two sassy girls at home that's sassy like their mama. <laughs> Right. Then you've got a husband. Mm -hmm. Right. And your husband is a like do everything dude. He is. Right. Yes. And then you're a worship leader at Purpose Church. And y'all, she shows up every single week. OK, <laughs> so she's not half showing up. She's not like put me on schedule twice a month or max three times a month. But she's showing up. And for real. Last month, she had a bunch of things she had to do. So she literally took off two weeks. And when she realized she took off two weeks, she's like, oh, my goodness, don't schedule me <laughs> off at all for the next few months because I took off two weeks in one month, you know? And I'm like, no, that's OK. Um, but that's her heart. That is uh, what she believes that the Lord has called her to do. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I just felt like it was so important that we talk to her um, and that she can maybe talk to some of you ladies out there and give you some um, thought processes, some advice, some transparency on what that journey and what that struggle is. So let's dig in. Yeah. So Amber, how do you handle responsibilities at home, work, church, ministry, how do you do that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, sometimes it doesn't feel like I handle it at all. You know, um, being a mom of two littles can be a lot. Um, but specifically at home, it's just being a mom, um, doing all the getting my kids ready for school, all the fun events that they have to do, um, corralling my one-year-old because she's into everything, <laughs> uh, trying to spend time with my husband. And anyone with young kids knows that that can be um, incredibly difficult to find the time, um, the sitters, all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I love it and it's great uh, with work. Right now I'm part time. I do work from home and that can be super challenging because trying to do anything on the computer. Yeah. While not having other little hands trying to work also. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that can be fun. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful that uh, my bosses are, are very good about being flexible with all of that. And then uh, at church, you know, I love Purpose Church and everyone there has been so kind with my children and um, so it, it's easy to do what I need to do there because I, I feel like I have that support. Um, okay. So I have kind of, we, we joke the, the aunties and the uncles of the worship team. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> We've all got our nicknames. Yes. Um, and so they always love to help out with the girls. And that makes my life so much easier to know that I have people who love my kids yeah. and, and want them to be there. Absolutely. Um, so for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's good. What are some of the challenges of balancing family commitments with leadership responsibilities? And then how do you overcome that? What is it that you do to be able to overcome those things? Yeah. So specifically uh, with the responsibilities at home, uh, I am a wife and a mother first over yeah. everything in my life uh, besides a Jesus follower. And right. so when it comes to my kids being sick or we've got something going on at the house, you know, I've got to um, put them first, which can be so hard when I've got yeah. other things going on that I want to be at church for or I want to be other places for. Um, and so with those leadership responsibilities, uh, I just have to, you know, pray that God allows, you know, when we have big services and things like that, that the girls will be healthy, that I will be healthy, um, that we can handle everything. Cause I feel like that is probably, especially as of late, sickness is one of the most difficult things because kids are sick so frequently. Right. Especially once um, they go back to school. Yes. Yeah. And you feel so bad bringing them to the church nursery, yeah. um, being sick and whatnot. And so I think kind of figuring out that happy medium, maybe having someone watch your kid in the service versus yeah. sending them to the nursery. And so that, that can be super challenging. And I think the way I've overcome that is by having such a great support system at the church. Um, and my in-laws go to church with us, so they can kind of help out with the girls here and there. And that is really, really helpful. And so, yeah, I think that's how, that's the best way that I'm able to overcome them. Right. So, and we were going to talk about support a little later, but let's talk about that now. Yeah. Um, having that support system, y'all, I'm telling you, um, those little girls come in 
And our team grabs those girls and they're like gone. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, they're gone. I mean, when the little one was first born, you know, she had to stay with mom real close. But now that she's a little bigger, I mean, she's in the back. She's sitting in the sound booth. She got headphones on. <laughs> like she is so involved, right? Yeah. She's a team member now. OK. Yeah, and sure. she's a little over one, you know, yep. but she's a team member now. She can move the little buttons and things. <laughs> but um, I think having that support system mm -hmm. is one of the huge things. I mean, come on, our team members, they're like, it's my turn. Yeah. I'm holding her now. It's my turn. And yeah. it's like, no, can you hit the button? You yeah. know, for uh, can you make sure that the, the mics are muted? You know, yeah. um, God forbid I take her on stage with me. Someone's like, no, mm -mm, exactly. It's my turn. <laughs> and I love that. Yeah, I do too. And I love that you get that space. I love that you get that support. So let's talk about that. How mm -hmm. important is it that they have a support system for not just church, but at home, like, oh, yeah. how can you do this today by having a support system? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not something I ever have to think about, right? I can just get up and go. Yeah. But for you, you're like, okay, wait, let me see what day I can get childcare. Let me mm -hmm. see what day, right? Because we couldn't do a podcast and the little ones are crawling all on top of us and things. But so what does that look like? How important is that yeah. to have a support system? You know, talk to us about that. Yeah. So I think in general motherhood, having a support system is so important. Yeah. Um, my husband and I were actually talking about that on the way over here. Um, we don't know how people do it without having a support system because we are so blessed to have that. Yeah. Um, my in-laws uh, play such a big role in um, child care while I'm working, uh, even date nights, whatever we need. Uh, but I do have family that's close by. So tonight my sister-in-law gets, you know, she's keeping my kids and <laughs> yeah. I'm so appreciative that I have that. And so I think uh, kind of moving over to the church side of that, uh, our church has, you know, they've created childcare for my four-year-old because she's all over the place. Yeah, yeah, and it's so yeah. difficult because, you know, the fact that we're out of school, I don't always know everybody who's going in and out. Yeah. And, and that can be scary. You know, you don't want your kid just running around with anybody. That's right. And so having uh, child care for her, having the people, the pr production team, essentially um, babysitting my one year old, you <laughs> yeah. know, that it's it's so crucial and it's so helpful. And I think that uh, it, it is important. And I don't think it's something that churches, like you said, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. And so um, I think it's so important that, you know, just speak up and say, I, I need help. Cause I remember I was scared to do that. Yeah. And then I said, Hey, Raina, I think I need some help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I need someone cause it's getting really, really difficult. Yeah. Um, so I think just being open with your leadership and saying, look, this is really what I need. Yeah. And it's not always going to be picture perfect, Yeah. but I think that right. having right. that support helps my worship time so yeah. much too. It, it allows my mind to be at ease that I know my children are being taken care of by people who care for them. That's right. So at Purpose Church, I think that's one of the things that um, the church, it wasn't available right away, right? Um, mm -hmm. We were coming and we had the kids just kind of in the auditorium. And again, we're a mobile church. So we are setting up and we're breaking down and the kids were in the auditorium and they were just kind of moving around. And then we got, you know, more kids starting to come. The team is getting bigger. So now the kids are starting to run around. Yeah. You know, the baby's no longer a baby where she's just sitting in a thing. Now she wants to move. Yeah. Right. She didn't just want to sit there. She wants to move. She wants to crawl. She wants to get around. And so one of the solutions that our church came up with is, um, they got childcare that wasn't just for, okay, service is getting ready to start, check your kid in, but they figured out a way to get childcare during the mobile time that we are setting up. And so there's a young girl who comes and she gets the kids, mm -hmm. you know, with some adult supervision. And they take the kids to the back so that she can set up and she can do the things like for Amber. If Amber's not there, we don't have any mics. OK, <laughs> <laughs> Amber sets up the mics and she, you know, she gets them ready. Make sure that they all have batteries in them, because, again, we're a mobile church and we're just growing. And so, you know, we're all doing multiple things. And so having the church pivot. Yeah. Right. And think about that. And it's not a problem to suggest these things. Even if you talk to your upper leadership and say, hey, we just need help. We don't want you to ever be afraid. Yeah. Right. To yeah. have that conversation and say, look, I'm struggling here. I really want to be a part of the ministry. But in order for me to do that, I need a little help in some areas. Yeah. And we welcome that. Yeah. Right. Because, again, we don't just want Amber's gift. We love Amber. Right. And we want Amber to be in a good place. We want her to enjoy what she's doing. We want her to enjoy her serve. Yeah. Right. And we want Amber to be a whole person. 
right? We don't want her to have to choose between her kids mm -hmm. and what she believes God is calling her to do. Right. Um, so that's really important. I think that's great. And so that'll lead me into this one. How in the world do you show up <laughs> every single week? Not every other week, not three weeks out of the month, but every week you show up, yeah. you show up with a smile. And y'all, there are those weeks that she comes in and she's like, y'all, <laughs> today, you know, <laughs> today. And that's the day that everybody's like, all right, we got you. And the kids, you know, somebody grabs the kids and they're gone. And then I think that probably gives you that space yeah. where you can woosah for a second. Yeah. Just have that amber space yes. in the back. Like, don't bother me while I'm putting up my mic. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to get me some breath while I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. How do you show up every week? Yeah, it, it can be so tough sometimes, but I feel like for me personally, I'm a very committed person. So mm. when I am committed to something, I commit and yeah. I I feel convicted if yeah. I'm not doing what I say I'm going to do mm -hmm. um, unless, you know, outside things are keeping me from being able to come, um, you know, don't always show up at 730 like she says. <laughs> She tries. And I try. It's not a problem. I try. Ever, ever. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you may get that text. You know, I'm not going to be here to 745 or 8, but mm -hmm. uh, I do think that's so important to have leadership that respects you enough to understand things are going to happen. That's right. I've got kids. I may oversleep. It may be really difficult to get my four year old out of the bed, which. She's like me. She don't like waking up early. So. <laughs> Do, I don't either. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it can be it can be so tough, but I think it's the commitment to it. Yeah. For me, uh, that's what that's why I do it. I, mm -hmm. I do it for the Lord because I feel like I've committed to him. He's given me this gift and I want to use it for him. That's right. Um, and so being there, being able to help out by doing the microphones, I know I didn't do that at first. Yeah. I showed up a little bit later, but it was something that was needed. And I'm like, I know how to do this. I can help out. Yeah. I can just it'll be something that I have to get myself up earlier. So it's just that commitment of making sure I do what I say I'm going to do. And yeah. I think that's, that's important for me to model for my children as well. That's good. And so y'all listen, a little bit of backdrop here. I'm worship pastor at Purpose Church. Her husband is production director and y'all, he is like all the way in. Um, and she is a worship leader on the team. And the way that our service works, everybody leads. So every service, she's leading a song. Every service, I'm leading a song. Every service, someone else is leading throughout the service. And so there was a Sunday that their littles were sick. And when my phone goes off on Sunday morning early, y'all, <laughs> the nerves just go crazy because I know that's generally somebody calling out. And so when I saw their name, I'm like, oh goodness, what is happening? And so um, they had literally thought through a solution to the issue that they were having. Um, and so they get on the phone and they're like, look, I know that um, you need both of us, right? But frankly, only one of us are gonna be able to get there. And so we have thought about what we could do. So either Kyle can come and set up if I can miss sound check, and then I'll be there for service so that I can sing through the mm -hmm. service or vice versa, whatever you think works, cause then he can go home while she's in the service. And so first of all, as a leader, um, I'm just so grateful that when they bring an issue or problem, they bring a solution. Um, and so I'm just like, do whatever you need to do for your kids. That's first, <laughs> right? If they just got to call out, they just have to call out. Yeah. You know, we will be okay. But the fact that they thought through that, yeah. um, I think that just speaks to your integrity. It speaks to your commitment level um, and it speaks to your commitment level to Jesus. Yeah. Right. Not just to us and to the team, but to the Lord. Yeah. But yet your commitment level to your kids. Right. Because you want to make sure that your littles are OK. Right. And that they are being cared for and you're not going to just give them to anybody and they're not right. feeling well. They're going right. to want mom and dad. Yeah. Right. So that stuff I'm telling you guys, they are the king and queen oh of, of do, <laughs> you know, of just making sure that their littles are good and also trying to keep their commitment. And so we're grateful for that. Um, so let's talk about this part. And I guess it leads right there. Given the fact that your husband is also a leader in worship ministry and is um, he just is a go guy, right? <laughs> like he is into it. Um, he is going to spend a lot of time yeah. getting things done, thinking yeah. about things that we can do, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to make ministry better. <laughs> He's sure. going to be up late and y'all his up late is probably like nine 30. 
but he's maybe gonna 10. be up <laughs> maybe 10 but that's because he's up at four o'clock in the morning but um he's gonna be up late doing things you're taking care of kids and he's like i'm doing yeah right so how do you keep that balance with home and him doing what he's doing in yeah. ministry, you doing what you're doing in, in ministry, and y'all having to make decisions like you had to make that day. Yeah. Like, how does that work yeah. in saying, well, why do I always have to be the one to stay home? Yeah. Why do you get to be the one, you know, if that's mm -hmm. where your heart is, but like, how do y'all manage that? Yeah, so uh, he is definitely, he takes his responsibilities very seriously. Very. Really in anything that he does, mm -hmm. he is the type to go all in. Um, but especially when it comes to church. And I love seeing it. I love seeing what the Lord has done in his life that way, mm -hmm. using his talents that way. That's right. Um, and it sometimes can be difficult because that takes away from our time with the girls. Yeah. Um, and I've had to kind of check myself because sometimes I'm like, why are you always having to do this? Why are you always having to do that? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it just comes with accountability on both of our ends, yeah. you know, I've got to realize that he's doing what he feels like he needs to be doing. Um, and then he has to have the accountability of me to say, hey, let's maybe let's shut that down and let's have some intentional time with our family. Yes. Um, because I, I grew up in a house where church was everything. Yeah. And um, not that my parents didn't love me or, yeah. you know, I didn't feel like that, but church was always, I felt like priority. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just very, uh, adamant that I don't want my children to feel that way. Yeah. Um, because I believe that it's God, family, then church. That's right. And it is. Yeah. And so I feel like it's so important that they don't feel like, oh, well, daddy doesn't think, you know, I'm as important as this. That's right. And because he doesn't, you know, I know his heart, mm -hmm. but as parents, we've got to balance each other out. And, you know, he, he tells me to come down. I tell him to come, you know, we got to kind of come together on things. And so it, it really can be difficult, especially when you have a spouse who is so committed, who is so hyper-focused. Yeah. Um, and because that makes really, it makes a great production director because he is so committed to all of the little details. That's right. But it, it can cause a strain. And I've just really had to be in prayer about that mm. and make sure that I'm not being selfish yeah. by saying, you need to, you need to stop. Yeah. And come to us yeah. and realizing that he's got things that the Lord has called him to yeah. the same as I have things that the Lord has called me to. That's They're right. just different so and good. they look different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in every household, it, it doesn't always have to be the mom who stays home in our household. That just happens to be how it is. I am definitely more of the nurturer. Mm -hmm. I want to be home with the kids. I want to, if they're sick, you know, you usually want your mama when you're sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, you know, I, as a yeah. mom, I just, I feel strongly about making sure that they feel loved and taken care of and they don't feel like the church is more important to them because yeah. I don't ever want them to not want to be a part of the church. Because of that, that's right. Yeah, I want them to look and at that's a whole church. nother podcast. Yeah, it is a whole nother <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a whole panel of that, y'all. We should talk about that. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. And I think I do think that is so important. Um, we don't have kids, but I am like your husband, mm -hmm. right? And my husband has to say, uh, you know, babe, it's time to shut that down. <laughs> you know, um, and yeah. I think when we first started hanging out, you and Ty were like, oh, wow, <laughs> this is kind of feeling the same here. Yeah. You know, our spouses are like over there going crazy. Yeah. And we're just kind of like, mm, really what's happening? What's exactly. <laughs> so um, I get that. Yeah. And I get that sometimes it gets hard. Like I said, we don't have uh, kids. We just have a little Cabbage Patch kid. <laughs> I love her though. <laughs> Inside joke, y'all. But we've just got our little cabbage patch, yeah. you know. Um, so we don't uh, we don't struggle with the kid part, but we do mm -hmm. have to struggle with making sure that it's God, family, and yeah. then the church. Um, and Still sometimes a family without kids. That's yeah. right. And sometimes He's got to hold me accountable there. Mm -hmm. And I know how hard it is. Yeah. You know when you're like, mm, like I I need I, I want to go. I want to get yeah. this done. So I mean, kudos to you. For one, having the ability to hold him accountable, but yet also being in a space of, I understand, yeah. you know, and then going to the Lord in prayer. That was so good. Like, that's the key, like talking to the Lord, because sometimes y'all, and this is me sometimes too. Sometimes we're like, Lord, change them. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, make them better. You know, stop them from doing this. And yeah. if you go to the Lord in prayer, he may turn around and say, mm -mm, 
It's something that you, I want you to change. Mm -hmm. This is an area because at the end of the day, we can't change anyone. Yeah. The only change we can make is us. Yeah. Right. And then the Lord is the one who's going to change anyone else or make any changes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it is us that needs to make mm -hmm. the change. So that's good. That's really good. So being in a leadership role, it takes time, energy. Yeah. Especially when you have a husband who's committed to more, more than you are. Right. What do you do for self-care? Because I know for us, right. We are always at it, right? <laughs> yeah. We're in rehearsal on Wednesday. So we're not one of those things that's like, we're coming on Sunday and that's all we're given. We're in rehearsal no. <laughs> on Wednesday. We're going out to eat before rehearsal on Wednesday. We're mm -hmm. in service on, we're in the church, seven o'clock Sunday morning. We're there until service is over. We break down and then we all go out to eat again yeah. together and we hang out. Then we got team nights where we're hanging out. And y'all, sometimes it's not even that. Their babies are having a birthday party and we're all over there having <laughs> birthday parties with little bees and honey and all the things. <laughs> I mean, y'all, she's just, she does so much. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, but all the things, right? We're hanging out outside of church. We're hanging out. And then yeah. you got family that you need to hang out with, right? Yeah. You got moms and sisters and mm -hmm. brothers and friends and all the things. So what do you do for self-care? Yeah, so I think for me personally, uh, spending time with some of my close friends, like even tomorrow night, I'm going to go out with some of the girls, um, after bedtime and, uh, just have time. We're all moms just have time where we can catch up yeah. and spend time together. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm probably not the best to ask about self-care. I'm horrible about it <laughs> as so many moms really are. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we should stop the stigma of feeling bad for wanting Absolutely. that time away for, uh, all of that, but it, it takes, you know, finding a sitter or yeah. um, scheduling with dad kind of, okay, when are you not doing something so I can be doing something? And so really just finding that time, whether it is him letting me uh, sleep in in the morning on, you know, yeah. Saturday or something and, mm -hmm. and taking the girls where I can have a couple of extra hours of sleep uh, or going with my friends somewhere or just going somewhere by myself to yeah. decompress a little yes. bit. Yeah. And I think those are really important for every parent and every person, yeah. but mom specifically, we're just, we're so bad about doing it. And it's so important. I think I've read somewhere, you know, you need to be the best version of yourself yes. to be the best mom for your kids yes. and the best, you know, wife for your spouse. And yeah. so I, I think that that's so important to work on if you're not already doing it to force it, you know, say, okay, yeah, yeah. this date, go ahead and schedule it because we've got to schedule That's things. Right. Uh, go ahead and say three Fridays from now, I'm going out by myself or I'm going out with some friends or something like That's that right. yeah. and just doing it and you'll feel so much better yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And you know, like she said, you'll be the best, you have to be the best version of yourself for your kids. And yeah. so I'm going to look right into this camera and tell y'all self-care is so important. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that being a mom is hard. Um, I haven't had children myself. My mom adopted four kids when we, I was like 18 and she gave each one of us a kid to be responsible for. So I spent quite a few years, um, raising up a little one and going to school, working and church. So I do understand a good bit of it, but what I want to say to you is release the, fe the feeling of be feeling guilty mm -hmm. because you want or need time for yourself. It is absolutely okay. It is necessary. You cannot pour anything into your children, your home, anywhere, even the stage, right? Without filling up yourself. Mm -hmm. You've got to fill up your cup yourself so that you can be what every, anyone needs you to be or whatever it is that you want to do or that you feel like the Lord is calling you to do. You can't do that empty. So good. So you have to take time for self-care. You have to take time. Sometimes my husband will be like, where are you going? I'm going to get my feet done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just got them done last week, but I feel like I need to get them done, <laughs> done again. I need this that week. massage again. You know what I'm saying? I need that <laughs> massage again. But sometimes, you know, you have to gauge. Yeah. And you know what? Lean into friends. Lean into family. And for some of you guys, I know you may not have that. You may not. Reach out to someone in the church women's ministry, anything, somebody that you can reach out to if you're at a point where you feel, I'm just not getting the rest that I need. I'm not getting the care that I need. But understand that you need that in order for you just to be a whole person. And it's okay. 
So let's talk about what type of long-term impact do you think serving in ministry the way that you do has on your kids? Yeah, so I think that it's so important that they see uh, specifically their mom being yeah. involved. The fact that I've got two little girls. Yeah. You know, I grew up in a church where uh, women were not in leadership. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was not promoted for mm -hmm. women to be in leadership mm -hmm. uh, unless you were going to be leading something with children. Mm. You know, you weren't to be even a woman worship pastor That's was right. something. Like I remember being told as a kid, well, I don't really nowhere in the Bible that it's wrong. I just, I don't, you know, I don't really feel like it's, that's the right thing. And it's mm. kind of like, okay. And so I very much felt, unless I was doing something with kids, unless I was singing in the choir, um, I wasn't as important yeah. as a man. And so I don't want my kids to ever feel like, I don't want my girls to feel like they're less important than mm. a man is. Um, God has a purpose for their life. Right. It feels awful. Yeah, it, it does. It yeah. does. And I don't, I don't want them to feel that way. Yeah. Um, I want them to feel like they can do anything that the Lord is calling them to and not being told by their parents or other adults around them. Well, you're a, uh, you're a girl, so that's not for you. Yeah. Um, because yeah. how dare you, right? Yeah. Say yeah. that to, yeah. say yeah. that to, like <laughs> God is telling them to do yeah. something and because they're, they're a woman or they're a girl, that's not acceptable. Yeah. Uh, so I just want them to see, even when it's hard, mm -hmm. because it is hard. It is hard. Uh, it's a commitment and it's hard, but it is so worth it. And even when it is hard, even when you may have to push past those obstacles, that doing what the Lord has called you to do yeah. is is so important. And it's going to be the most rewarding thing, mm -hmm. especially as a mom. It's mm -hmm. so rewarding. It's so rewarding to see my daughter in the back as I'm practicing my songs in the car, say, oh, mommy, I know this song and <laughs> sing along to it. Yeah. Uh, or my youngest, you know, as soon as she hears music, come on, start shaking her little booty and <laughs> getting with it. Like that's yeah, what I, yeah. I love that they they see that and they mm -hmm. enjoy it. Like it's church is an enjoyable experience for That's them. Right. They feel loved. They feel like they are allowed to be there. You know what I yes, mean? Yes. Like places you may not feel like you are very welcome. That's right. And especially as women, we've got to sometimes feel like we've got to push, you know, bulldoze past um, so, some yeah. doors to be able to allow, be allowed to do things, um, especially in kind of the more conservative realms. Yeah. So I just... I want them to see that mom values so good. Um, being in ministry yeah. and serving God and whatever the obstacle, God's going to help you overcome it. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. Um, and their kids are in rehearsal. We had someone audition last week and I told her, look, we got kids all in rehearsal. Yeah. Bring, your, bring your kids, do what you need to do, right? And if we ever get to, and I'm telling y'all, if we ever get to a point that the kids are distracting or they're whatever... We're not telling parents that they can't bring their kids. We need to find a solution so that we can care for the kids when they get there, yeah. right? Um, their little one comes and we put a little mic on the chair that's got no cord to it, right? <laughs> you know, and or she hops on the drums and she play, you know. Um, and to be honest with you, um, I know we came to get a job done, right? Mm -hmm. But we can take a second and let her pop on the drums for a few minutes. Yeah, We can take a second and let Amber stick a mic toward her mouth and let her holler for a second. We can take a second to do those things, y'all. Yeah. Um, we need to love our people and not make them feel like mm -hmm. they are coming, like they are soldiers. This is how we got to do it. We got to get in and out of here. We just, you know what I mean? But I think that's um, definitely the showing if you should be in where you are. That's because right. if you're feeling such a pushback, if yeah. you, it's it's becoming more miserable yeah. for you to come with your kids. You feel like your kids aren't welcome. Yeah. You know, maybe God's saying, "Hey, let's let's find another place right. that accepts your children that's right. for for what it is." You know, right. kids are crazy. They're going to be <laughs> running right. around, hollering, that's throwing right. tantrums. That's and, right. Uh, we as moms don't need to be made f to feel bad for that, mm. or as dads. You know, if you're having to bring your kids, like we shouldn't be made to feel bad for that. And having a great support system like we do at Purpose Church. No one makes me feel bad That's right. for coming with right. my kids. That's right. You've had to walk. We're in rehearsal and, you know, Olivia does something. And I mean, she's walked off the stage with her mic in the hand, still singing, trying to walk, <laughs> you know, doing whatever. Sometimes you got you put it down and you keep and we keep yeah. going. Sometimes we stop. Yeah. Right. And we wait. And no one's like, is she, like her. We're just yeah. 
and we talk. Maybe we just do chatty. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But we well, take hey, the we moment. Talk. <laughs> you know, we take a moment and chat and just yeah. kind of talk through things during the song or something. But at the end of the day, um, it's okay. Yeah. Like we're just not so serious and in our heads. And so like, we got to do this and do that, that we cannot love our people. Mm -hmm. That's going to be so, and those are part of our core values, right? Love yeah. God, love people, pursue excellence, choose joy. And so we love God, but we, one of the ways we love God is by loving people yeah. and making sure that our people feel loved and know that we don't just want them there for their serve. Right. Like we love them. We love their kids and we are going to be there for them and their kids. That's so good. So good. So let's start with some of the hard questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us what a hard day looks like for you. Oh, goodness. It can be a lot of things. Um, the thing that comes to my mind is just screaming, you know, kids <laughs> just screaming everywhere. Me and my daughter, who's four, like I said, she's very much like me. Mm -hmm. So fighting, you know, feeling like we're just constantly at it with the discipline and yeah. whatnot. Um, those can be so draining, mm -hmm. um, especially when they are on Sunday mornings before church or yeah. before Wednesday practices or different things like that. It can be so, so difficult. Uh, but yeah, hard days for us right now is, is really tantrums and screaming <laughs> and uh, just not napping, all that fun stuff. Right, so how do you, how do you navigate that? Um, yeah, so definitely just giving myself grace in yeah. those moments yeah. because I may snap at my kid or uh, act in a way that I don't want to be acting, yeah. but I'm still a human and it yeah. still happens and allowing myself to take that minute, yeah. come into service and say, take these kids away from me. <laughs> Y'all, she happens. A, she's a superwoman. <laughs> oh like I've seen, um, I've seen Olivia have a day. Yeah. Right. And you're moving, trying to do things, and you kind of get like, oh, and then you stop, and you're like, come here, baby, mommy. Sorry, I totally did not mean. You know, and it's yeah. not that you you didn't do anything and hurt her, right? Yeah. But for you, your response was not the one that you wanted to right. have, and so you stopped. Mm -hmm. And you were like, baby, come, I'm sorry. Mommy's trying to just do some things right now and I need you to take a second. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's all good and you're good. And then sometimes somebody's like, hey, Liv, come on. Yeah. You know, and they just kind of take her away. Yeah. Um, and then you get that second to, to breathe. And so, and I respect that. I love that, um, that you're not walking around like, oh, we just have everything perfect no. and we don't have the problem. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. life. This is life. Mm -hmm. And if we can't be real and transparent yeah. about what we go through in life, we're never going to help anybody. No. Right. Um, everyone's just going to be trying to live up to that life that they see on social media. Mm -hmm. Like social media is such a curse. Sometimes, oh, yeah. Right? I've fallen into that. Like, why? Why am I always yelling at my child? Why is she not this or that? Or right. sitting picture perfect. And that's that's not real life. It took them all day to get that. Perfect. Yeah. Like she won't even <laughs> let me put her hair up in any way. Like I can brush it and that's it. You and know, say, yeah, like yeah. that's that's life and it it's messy, that's but right. it's also beautiful. That's right. It is. It is. That's good. So hard question. Do you ever feel like giving up and what stops you if you do? Yes. And I, don't, I don't mean giving up on life. No, <laughs> I just no. mean like giving up ministry, like, look, I can't do this yeah. and like that kind of stuff. I've what? joked. So my second was a very, very difficult baby. Um, you know, went through all of the colicky screaming constantly. So even when I'm trying to be on stage, you know, constantly having to cover and nurse her while singing and, um, that was very difficult on my mental health. Yeah. And I just, I feel like for months I was just kind of an empty shell coming in, doing my commitment, um, not saying that I didn't get anything from it or God didn't speak to me or be able to still use me. Yeah. But like sometimes even trying to remember that is so, it's fuzzy because yeah. uh, of that like postpartum depression and all the things that I was um, going through during that time. Um, and it made me fight more with my toddler uh, because she was feeling, you know, she had an adjustment of having a new sister born. Right. And so she was fighting a whole lot more. She was a whole lot more jealous. And uh, my newborn uh, slash, you know, four or five month old was just screaming, <laughs> <laughs> just wanting to be nursed constantly. And yeah. so there was many Sundays I told my husband this uh, a few months back that 
I just wanted to call you on the way and be like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Like I would almost feel panic attack type. Like yeah. I know I'm going to have to go into service and I'm going to be having to parent these two children mm -hmm. and also be present on stage and yeah. lead worship. And so for a while there, I, I think every Sunday, uh, on the way, I wanted to give up. By the end of the service, I was thankful that I didn't. Right. Uh, yeah. But it's so easy to kind of allow yourself to just say, no, I just want to stay home. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. That's right. And yeah. for a while, I just, I would go home immediately after. I wasn't going out to eat with everybody. And mm -hmm. I realized, you know, I want to, I need to be around people yeah. who are going to speak life into me mm -hmm. and into my kids and be around, just be around people and yeah. not be in my own head by yeah. myself. Yeah. And so I think doing that really saved me during that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also knowing though, I may need a break. Yeah. You know, realizing when you need a break is right. so important. So what do you do? So yeah, and I'm thinking as you're talking, you know, what would you do, do different? So would that be something that you would do different? Like, you know what? I probably should have taken more of a break yeah. instead of getting back so quickly. Yeah, I sometimes wonder because I came back when um, my second was what, like 10, 11 weeks old. Mm -hmm. And so still so super fresh. Yeah. And uh, maybe if she was a little bit of an easier baby, it wouldn't have been that difficult of an adjustment. Right. Um, but I also went back to work at that time. And so there was just a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. And so maybe pushing it out a couple of more weeks or just saying, hey, maybe just bring me back like, one or two Sundays a That's month, right. just That's, easing yeah. myself in. And I'm not good at easing myself in. <laughs> I just like to be yeah. in, be yeah. back. Yeah. And so I think that knowing your limits and not feeling, not feeling guilty if you need to take that time. That's right. Because you guys never made me feel guilty, but it's in my own head. Yeah. I just wanted to come back yeah. and I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Uh, but not knowing how that was necessarily going to affect me, the getting up super early and trying yeah. to get two kids out of the door, what I, which was brand new to me. Right. And so uh, knowing if you need to take a step back, uh, hopefully your leadership allows that like they're okay with that and they understand where you're coming from and even if they don't understand from a parent standpoint right. they understand that you're doing what you need to do for yourself that's right i don't even think i asked you when you were coming back no i think i, I like blocked wait, it off yeah, yeah like you know and i don't i don't know that i would have been even okay being like so when are you coming back yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah like it was just like look when amber's ready she comes back yeah. Right now, she needs time at home. She needs time with her kids. Even if I had to sing by myself every week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. would live. You got to do... Y'all, don't be afraid to do what you need to do for you. Mm -mm. Right? Never. Take the time that you need for yourself as a person. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you're still a person. Yes. You're still a person. You're a mama, but you're a person. Mm -hmm. You're a human. And you need a moment sometimes. Yeah. And so that's good. And I'm glad that you kind of thought about like, what could I have done differently in that yeah. space, you know? Um, and maybe extra time is more because it is a lot. You go back to work, you go, you know, you mm -hmm. got the baby. And even if she was a good baby, yeah. now you go back and you're separated from her. So mm -hmm. you have that separation anxiety. Oh yeah. You know, you got all the things. So yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, and then here's another one. Really hard question. Uh -huh. Don't feel guilty for answering this however you want to answer it. Yeah. Um, is there anything in ministry, or even maybe life, right? Let's go there too, that you want to do that the littles keep you from doing? Yeah, so, you know, Kyle and I were actually talking about this on the way and even like leading a small group yeah. at church. It's so, it's so difficult. It's so time consuming um, when you have kids because you've got a certain window of time. Yeah. We tried a small group that was kind of a window of time that worked well for us and it didn't really work well for other people. Mm -hmm. And so it's just one of those things that uh, we try, you know, to find community with other people with young kids and things like that. And it's just, you know, most people aren't going to be able to get together in the evening at 7 p.m. when it's your bed, your kid's bedtime. Yeah. And so that, you know, that has made things really difficult or even for me personally, uh, sometimes I feel like I could do more, you know, yeah. I could do more at the church, help set up. I could be involved with this or be involved with that. And then yeah. I think, okay, well, what am I going to do with my kids during that time? Yeah. And so, you know, Kyle is so involved with production that he really can't, you know, just have them 
around him because they'd probably get lost with how fast he moves. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that uh, that is definitely something that I have thought about many times. So I know that's like hard, yeah. right? Um, just really, you know, having a heart to want to do things, you know, and then you you got to think. And so y'all, you know, again, don't feel guilty Mm-mm. because you're being human and you really have a heart to kind of do things or get involved with things. And you just can't because of your littles. Um, I don't have littles, but I have really bad knees. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like things that I really would like to do that I cannot. Oh, yeah. um, and I just have to give myself grace, you know, and you just have to do the same mm-hmm. thing with your kids. And you just have to give yourself grace with the things and know that it won't always be that way. Right. Exactly. It's not, it's not always going to no. be that way. No. Um, there are seasons in our lives where, you know, we may have to give up something um, for that season. And then uh, the Lord, I promise you, the Lord will open doors for the things that you have. Because here's the thing. Nine times out of 10, if you are in your word, you are praying and you're spending time with God, whatever desires you have, they come from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. He puts the desires there for right. for things. Right. Especially if we've been spending time with him. And so because that's how he talks to us and that's how he gives us the instruction. And so um, know that if the Lord's giving you the instruction now may not be the time, but you can take the time and prepare. Right. Mm-hmm. Get ready for what it is that God wants to do. Exactly. Maybe spend your extra time studying or researching or looking up or just doing whatever it is to prepare for that moment exactly. for the thing that you believe God is calling you to do. Sure. So that's good. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the fact that you have never really been made to feel uncomfortable about bringing your kids to church and to rehearsal, stuff like that. Praise the Lord. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, that would be pretty awkward conversation. Yeah, here, right? <laughs> um, what, let's say that a, a mom does, or dad even, does experience that. What is your suggestion on how they should respond? Yeah, so I think that if, the church is not valuing that family relationship, Mm -hmm. um, that's a red flag in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because if they're just, like you said before, you don't want me just for my serve. That's right. And I think that that resonates with so many uh, people in general because we don't want to just be wanted for what we can offer. Uh, We want people to care about us for us. Mm -hmm. And so if a church is making you feel uncomfortable for being a parent, then maybe let's rethink whether either you're supposed to be in uh, that ministry at that church. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a different ministry that is a little bit more conducive. uh, Or if you're just really set that this is something that God wants you to do, uh, it may be time to, you know, find a new church. And that can be a really, really tough decision to make, Mm -hmm. especially if you love the church that you're in, if you're really enjoying it. And maybe it's, for me, I would probably sit down ask for a sit down conversation That's right. with the leadership, mm-hmm. um, maybe involve, you know, whatever, uh, whoever is above, if you're in worship, whoever is above, uh, maybe bringing the pastor in even and saying, Hey, let's, right. can we talk about this and see what the problem is? And if you're getting pushback from everywhere, you know, depending on how it's handled, um, I think would be depending on, on what you would do. Yeah. Um, but me, I would probably want to have a conversation and say, look, this is how this is making me feel. And some people, uh, you may think that they are acting a certain way or believe a certain way and they don't. And they're like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry that I've even been making you feel this way. Yeah. And so, uh, or they can help if it's other people in the group that maybe aren't in leadership that's making you feel that way. You know, Uh, I believe that we should speak to our brothers and sisters in Christ and not just say, oh, well, I'm done. I'm leaving now Mm -hmm. Um, because it could just be we are portraying something a certain way. Yeah. And so sitting down and having that conversation, I think, would be start. But knowing that if they're not honoring your you know, uh, responsibility as a parent mm-hmm. first, uh, then they're not really respecting you. Yeah. So, you know, and that that's that little B word, you know, boundaries. Yeah. Right. We it's have hard. to set boundaries for what we um, what we need in our lives, you know, and. It is important, you know, sit down, worship leaders, worship pastors, worship directors, um, care for your people. Like you have to care for your people more than you care for um, your, what you produce on Sunday, Mm -hmm. right? Um, What we produce is really secondary to uh, caring for our team, 
loving our team and being there. And sometimes that's all someone needs, yep. right? Is just for someone to say, I see you, mm -hmm. right? I see you, I hear you, I understand what you're going through. And you know what, I'm gonna be here for you to support you through this time. Yeah. You know, especially like, forget if it's like a single mom. Yeah. Right. And that like that's mm -hmm. all she got. You know, you got some moms that's like rehearsals my my time away. Y'all stay home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. but then when you got you guys where it's both of y'all that's in, you know, involved. Yeah. You know, I'll see you sometimes like at Kyle, you know. Yeah. I'm help trying to rehearse. Yeah. Be, help me out here. You <laughs> yeah. know, I'm trying to rehearse, you know. Yeah. Um, and I love that y'all have that, you yeah. know. And then I sometimes I see the banter where he's like, oh, I'm, like, I'm trying to do this. And yeah. you're like, well. We I'm talking about this. Right, exactly, right? We <laughs> had this conversation. And, and you know, and I leave space for that. Yeah. Right? My husband and I, we're in ministry together. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure y'all see us sometimes like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we try to yeah. make sure it doesn't happen, right? But we are human. Yeah. And so we leave space for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I see a little banter, I'm like, so, you know, hey, <laughs> over here, you know, let them, yeah. let them take their second. Yeah. And, and y'all, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like we are, we're human, we're family, right? Yeah. That's, that's who we are. It is real life. Yeah. And I want my team members to know that this is a safe place to yeah. be. It is a safe place to experience things. And, you know, no, we don't want people out of control, of course. And we, right. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at each other. <laughs> come to our that rehearsal. Might be awkward. If you, right. If you want to throw things and yell, just come on to Purpose Church. But no, um, we want to make sure that our team members um, are just loved. Yeah. Right. I think if we are whole people, and we are doing what we're doing with people because here's the thing, and this is, and this is what I remember with Ty and I, when our, our niece passed away tragically, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I remember um, Pastor calling and saying, hey, you know, if y'all don't want to come, you know, Sunday, I've already talked to Kyle or I've already talked to this person to make sure that y'all, you know, have coverage. And, yeah. you know, and my response to him was, I haven't talked to Ty about that yet, but I can almost guarantee that he's going to want to be in service. He's yeah. going to want to be, around the people that he knows loves him and cares yeah. for him, you know, huh, I'm about to tear up, you know? <laughs> and so when I, um, and when I spoke to our production director at mm -hmm. that time, cause Kyle hadn't stepped into that position yet. Um, you know, I had said, Hey, um, she said, you know, pastor asked me, I just wanted to check in with you. Pastor asked me if you guys were going to be there, but you know, I told him if I know them, they're going to be here. Yeah. Because they're going to want to, and that's the only place we wanted to be. Yeah. You want to be with your community. We wanted to be with our community. We wanted to be with people that we knew would love, hug, keep a hold of us. Cause we were like, okay, I'm falling apart here. Yeah. But my people, you know, that's where we're going to find the, the space, the, the love that we need, right. Right. To get through this time. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we do that for our team. Yeah. And l like, if you're not doing that for your team, y'all, and that's not to say that if someone has a death in the family or something and they say they don't want to be there, that's okay too. Right. Whatever decision they need, you support that. Whatever decision they make, you support that decision. All right. Um, but that was just for us because we had that, that he comfort. Offered that that's right. Great. He offered that was great. But we feel safety with our family. Right. We feel love, support. And, um, and that's just what we needed. And so right. we need to make sure that we do that for our team of course. and that we give them that same, um, place and that same thing to rest in. So, um, and this is a question you can be honest with me if I need to do better <laughs> on camera, no, but <laughs> what could other ministry leaders do to better assist you in your serve? Is there something else that you would say, look, here's a suggestion that I think you need to do, worship leaders need to do, um, just to make sure that their team team members, if they are moms, and we're talking about moms specifically, yeah. what could we do better? Yeah, so um, like I've said before, I think that thankfully I'm very blessed at Purpose Church to uh, be given the space that I need to mm -hmm. be a mom with my kids there. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that, you know, finding when I came to you and asked like, Hey, is there someone who could just keep track of this one child of mine who keeps <laughs> running off? Yeah. You know, you found somebody to help. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that, that meant the world to me because it wasn't like, well, no, that's your responsibility to find, right. you know, care for your child. Like you were like, yeah, girl, I got you. And you found somebody to help out. And thankfully, you know, we got, uh, had a new 
children's director come in and mm -hmm. she found out that we had kids that were getting there super early and she's like well i'm getting there early let's find a solution yeah and so kind of that inter uh, mingling of ministries was able to work together That's for right. each other and i think that was that was great uh but for sure just the fact that i could come to you and and you were like yeah of course like there was no pushback there was no like this is not my responsibility i didn't yeah. feel uh, any type of stress in asking you that. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Um, thank you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, worship pastors, leaders, directors, y'all. I'm going to keep talking to you because that's what this podcast is about, right? <laughs> um, we want our team, we want to be approachable. Yeah. And we want to make sure that our team can come to us. It doesn't matter what it is, y'all. Like we've got to be that support, especially if you have the title of pastor, right? that pastoring means we're serving y'all, right? Y'all aren't serving us. We're serving you guys and we're being there for y'all. And so um, that's part of what it is to be a pastor. And I think making sure that people feel like they can come to us, they can trust us, um, they can give, give us the ugly of what they're dealing with. And we're not like, well, what's wrong with you? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Holier like than now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, just be that support. Um, be what they need in the moment. See how you can help them. It doesn't matter what that needs. And I'll tell y'all, I learned that from uh, my pastor back in New York, where we were at another church plant. Um, and I had knee surgeries when I first met them. I was on my second knee surgery. Wow. Um, and when I came to church on Sunday and I'm telling y'all, I come from a background where you serve the pastor. Yeah. Right. Um, the pastor wasn't standing at the door talking to anybody. And if they did, they maybe shook a hand. They weren't, you know, spending time, time with people like right. that. Um, and so that's kind of the mindset that I had, you know, but they shifted that, um, because they served people. Mm -hmm. V1, woohoo. But they served people. And so I would come to rehearsal and she'd be like, Raina, are you good? Are your knees okay? Do you need me to get you a chair? She would go get the chair. Yeah. She would go get me something to drink. We had bagels in the morning. Did, Rain, did you get a bagel? Let me go get you a bagel. Um, she would do that for me. Yeah. And I was just like, wait a minute, is this a pastor? Or like, who, you know, who's <laughs> who doing it? That's right. And she taught me how to be a lead servant, Yeah. you know, and not a worship leader. You know how sometimes we can kind of get that thing yeah. about us that's like, serve me. Um, and so I'm so grateful yeah. for that leadership and for that change. Um, watching pastor at, here at Purpose Church pull bins out of a truck, get there the same time that we do, yeah. putting signs outside, you know, going and getting chairs mm -hmm. for the stage and doing all the things, watching our lead pastor serve, yeah. right? It makes a difference. And so... Um, Y'all serve, serve your people and, and, and make sure that they know that they're loved and cared for. So before we get to the closing part here, let me just say to you, um, your leadership contributes so much to us creating an inclusive environment and a welcoming worship environment for other moms. Um, the way that you lead each week the way that you, I'm telling you, like, I am a stalker. Aww. Like, I am watching you, like, I watch you walk in. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so amazing. Aww. You know, when you walk in with the kids and you see Olivia just do, 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 do behind you <laughs> with her cup and you come in the room or when you walk into the green room and you push the door, I, I'm paying attention, okay? <laughs> You're probably like, she's crazy. But you push the door in with your foot, baby in the thing, and you scoot yourself in, you hold it for Olivia to walk through, and then you put everything down and you're like, <sighs> <laughs> you know, and then you I move it. And you, exactly. <laughs> and you move and you kind of get things done. Um, and then even your vulnerability and your transparency to, hey, help me. I, you know, she's running around and like, I, I'm like, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, like I'm either sing or I'm going to chase her around. Yeah. Okay. Because like you said, we're in a school. Yeah. There's a lot of places that she can go. Yeah. Right. That we wouldn't even be able to find her. And teachers coming in and out. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. she could lose her place and not know where she is. Yeah. Right. We don't want her somewhere in a room crying and she didn't know where she yeah. is. Right. Um, your vulnerability there to say, help me. Right. And then even your ability to say, you know, Someone is taking my kid, you know, um, the guys, they're like, give me, you know, and I'm telling you all, we do, we have nicknames for uncle. Uh, we, we won't tell you what they are, but we've got nicknames, right? Yeah. Um, 
and they take her and they hold her and everyone, Olivia, you know, you got work on her because yeah. today she'll say hello and tomorrow she's like, get away, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, um, you allow that. Yeah. you're open to the support because some people don't even want that. Yeah. Right. They don't want everyone touching their kid. Yeah, they don't hard. let people hold their kids. Some people. But you're like, yeah, thanks. Yeah. You know, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. And then you get up and you worship with everything that you have. I've not only seen you grow as a mom, but I've seen you grow as a worship leader. Mm-hmm. I've seen you come from the girl who started out like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bob my head, you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> To being like, woo, you know, like in it. And we're, I turn around and I'm looking at you and I'm like, oh, and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to come in here. You know, and I'm just like, she, you know, just watching you um, do that, do that with your babies. It is such an inspiration, even for other moms to be like, I can do that. Yeah. I can do this. I can still with a husband at home, mm-hmm. with a job, with my kids, I can still come with my two kids. Like even, I think the most we've had, we've said is like, hey y'all, we've got a photographer coming in this day. So can we make sure that we give somebody the babies so that we can get yeah. the pictures? And, and I, I think you said something where I was like, do I need to get some somebody from my I kids? even feel uncomfortable saying that. I'm like, <laughs> mm, I don't even know, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's still reality, right? right. Um, and so, but your ability to just show up every week. Um, It is not an easy feat. It's not something to overlook. It is not something to not be like, she's a superwoman. Like she's doing it. You know, (laughs) Uh, like I told you, it's just me and my husband. (laughs) And if I had to do more, even right now, I'd be like, you know what? I think I'm gonna take two weeks off. Yeah. But no, I mean, I'm committed, you know, and I just love um, who you are, what you are, what you represent. um, And not just the kids, but you support your husband like 150%. Um, we're on the phone <laughs> all times of day and night. And I'm My like, wife. <laughs> exactly, right? And I'm like, where's Amber? Like, I want Amber's opinion, you know? Like, we're talking through stuff and Amber's like, wait, excuse me, did I hear what I heard? No, let's do, you know? So I love that and I appreciate that so much. Um, but I know that we are nuts and that we are like totally into it. And so your support for him and the things that he has to do from, you know, going us going up to the cabin, you know, on a Friday night yeah. or what is it, Saturday night, yeah. you know, to go and sing, do worship for youth ministry mm-hmm. and you're home with the kids, yeah. you know, um, just your ability to let him go and him be, but you also be able to go and be. Um, and then like, just forget the fact that your voice is angelic oh my goodness. and it's like on Sundays, <laughs> it's like, Amber, let Amber sing, <laughs> you know, um, that part of it too, you know, and I remember, and I told y'all I'm a stalker. So let me just tell y'all, um, when we first met you guys and y'all first started coming to the church, um, you know, Facebook is like, let me see. Yeah. Let me see. Search. <laughs> let me see. You know, and I started a video. I was like, babe, come like, she sings so good, you know, but just, um, at spending time with you, getting to know you, getting to love you as a person. Um, I'm grateful that you're part of our team. I'm grateful mm-hmm. that um, we can learn and grow from you. Mm-hmm. Um, other moms, you're an example. Anybody that doesn't have kids, you're an example to them that those are the one, those ones that want to have children, you know, and are going to have children and, you know, soon. Yeah. Like they can look at you and say, you know what, I can do this. I don't have to not. I don't have to give up the thing that I love. Yeah. I can still be a mom. I can still be a great mom yeah. to my kids. And I watch you have to make decisions sometimes, but you make them. Right. You make them. You are. You have boundaries. You do what you have to do. And so we love you. I love you. And I'm so grateful for you. So tell our listeners some of the ways that they can lead by example at home and in ministry as a mom. Something they can kind of take away. Yeah. From our talk today that they can literally like say, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this different. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think the biggest thing for me is telling myself I can do hard things because it's not going to be easy. Uh, And I think that the most rewarding things in life tend to be difficult. Uh, That's, you know, where it stretches us to lean on God a little bit more and Mm. less on ourselves. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, especially with the girls, you know, I've got to make sure in the morning we've got a schedule to kind of 
get ready to head out to do what we need to do. Yeah. Uh, if that is getting them a special treat, like heading to Starbucks and getting a cake pop. I don't care. It's seven o'clock in the morning. We're going to get a cake pop. Uh, doing those little fun Is that things. why she's running around? Probably. <laughs> Probably why she's a little crazy. <laughs> so good. Uh, getting yourself a coffee, giving yourself kind of some of that self-care. You know, it, yeah. It's a $6 coffee. Get it. If that's going to be something that's going to help you enjoy the morning to get through things, do it. Uh, and just good. really, uh, like she said, that I, I hand off my kids. That's not always been easy for me. <laughs> I'm very much an attached parent. I like to be with my babies. I like to be with my kids. And for the longest time with my uh, newborn, um, I did. I had her strapped on to me, and uh, I really didn't want a lot of people holding her. And I felt like I needed to do it all myself but you don't and you can't (laughs) it's going to break you if you try to do it yourself yeah so leaning on um those aunties and uncles like i call them in the worship and production allowing them to help take care of my children to be my village to be my community yeah um i think that it has brought me so much uh, more clarity, mental health. My mental health is so much better um, that I can have my worship practice time as kind of my time to not have children with me, to just be able to enjoy the time yeah. and know that the kids are being taken care of. So I think it's so important to be able to hand your children off uh, or if, you know, ask for that help like we talked about earlier because it's going to be difficult, but if you are committed, it's going to be so worth it to you. You're going to you're going to grow and do things that you didn't think you could do even six <laughs> months ago. My yeah, daughter is yeah. what, 13-ish months now, and I did not think that I would still probably be here doing this mm-hmm. uh, because it was just very difficult at the beginning, but knowing your limits and knowing your boundaries. And if you need that time, take it and don't let anyone make you feel bad about it Uh, especially making those decisions for your kids doing what is right by them you're doing what's right by the lord that's right yeah that's so good right um the lord he's he's number one for sure the lord is number one he is absolutely number one and um if you do keep the Lord first, he'll guide you, right? He will guide you um, through it all. So Amber, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence Thanks today, sharing your heart and talking about leading worship in the rhythm of motherhood. Um, you do it amazing. <laughs> um, you're an amazing mom. Leadership is hard all by itself, right? Leading worship, just being a leader, period. It is hard all by itself, but being a mom and a worship leader, Together, I know that it is challenging and you do it well. Y'all, Amber has given us so many nuggets of wisdom today and we are so thankful that she took time, that she gave us her heart, thankful for her willingness and her transparency because it's hard to talk about this stuff and to admit things to people so that it can be a help to you and a help to your friends or anybody that is leading. And it doesn't even have to be worship. If they're just leading and they know that it's a lot, like share this with them. Let them, you know, see that moms can be transparent. And it's okay. So thanks again, Amber. We love you. And we are praying that God continue to move in your life and in your girls' lives. And I know that they're going to be proud. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. For now, the podcast will be dropped bi-weekly. Over the coming episodes, we'll be talking about worship leading or not in the season of grief, worshiping through all the noise and the mess of life, the biblical pattern of worship, how to choose your songs for worship services, balancing being a leader of worship ministry with home, dealing with challenging personalities on your team, and so much more. So thank you all for joining us on this episode of the Worship Tea Podcast. I hope this conversation spoke to you concerning your worship journey. And if you want to actually watch instead of listen to this episode, you can find it on my YouTube channel at I am Raina Brown under the podcast playlist. We'd also like to hear from you guys. So if you have specific questions or even concerns that you'd like to hear discussed here on the Worship Tea Podcast, please visit my website at www.rainabrown.com and submit your questions through the contact page. We will do our best 
to tackle every topic. I'd also love to connect with you on all social networks. And I am at I am Raina Brown on all networks. So I make it easy for you. Or you can visit www.RainaBrown.com. So thanks for joining us. And we will catch you on the next episode of the Worship Tea Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe.